Hey, good greetings, fourth graders. We are on reading 14, and we're in the chapter Fang Hits Town. And yep, they are in the shoe store. Fudge is throwing a fit. Poor Peter, who's in fourth grade, is putting up with this little brat brother. And he's throwing a fit because he doesn't want the shoes that mom has picked out for him. Now look, Fudge, my mother said, you must get new shoes. Your old shoes are too small. So what kind do you want? I don't know why my mother bothered to talk to him like he was a regular person. Because when Fudge gets himself into a tant- temper tantrum, he doesn't listen to anything. By that time, he had thrown himself onto the floor where he beat his fists against the rug. What kind do you want, Fudge? Because we're not leaving here until you have new shoes, my mother said. Like she meant it. I figured we'd be there for the rest of the day or eh, maybe even the week. How could my mother have been embarrassed over a little hole in my sock and then act like nothing much has happened when her other son was lying on the floor yelling and screaming and carrying on? Wow, that's a good question. I'm going to count to three, my mother's told Fudge, and then I want you to tell me which shoes you want. Ready? (laughs) One, two, three. Fudge? Wow, by surprise, sat up like pitas, he said. (laughs) I smiled. I guess the kid really looks up to me. He even wants to wear the same kind of shoes. (laughs) I'm shocked. I didn't think he was going to listen to mom. But everybody knows you can't buy loafers for such a little guy. They don't come in your size, Mr. Berman told Fudge. Yes, 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 like pitas, Fudge hollered. Mr. Berman held up his hands and looked at my mother as if to say, I give up. But my mother said, I have an idea. She motioned for me and Mr. Berman to come closer. I had the feeling I wasn't going to like the idea. But I listened anyway. I think we have to play a little joke on Fudge, he said. What do you mean, I asked. Well, suppose Mr. Berman brings out a pair of saddle shoes in your size and... Oh, no, I said, you're not going to make me wear saddle shoes. Never. Listen, let me finish, my mother said. Mr. Berman can bring them out and you can try them on and then Fudge will think, that's what you're getting. But when we leave, we'll take the loafers. That's mean, I said. (laughs) You take advantage of him. Since when do you worry about that, my mother asked. Since now, I told her. Look, Peter, my mother said, checking her watch. It's 12 o'clock. I'm starved. Me too, I said. Well, then, if you ever want to get some lunch, let's try my idea. Okay, okay, I said. I sat back in my chair while Mr. Berman hurried to the stockroom again. Fudge looked at me from his position on the floor. Like pizzas, he said. Yeah, sure, Fudge. Told him. Mr. Berman came back with a pair of brown and white saddle shoes in my size. I tried them on. Ooh, did they look ugly. See? Peter's nice saddle shoes, my mother said. Now Fudgy tries on nice saddle shoes. Fudge let Mr. Berman get him into his new pair of shoes. See, he said, see, like Peter's. He held up a foot. That's right, Fudge, I said, just like mine. You can sure fool these little kids easy. (laughs) Wear them a wrap, Mr. Berman asked my mother while Fudge walked around in his new shoe. Wrap them, of course, she said. I wonder why my mother would tell Fudge tomorrow what she would tell Fudge tomorrow when I wore my new loafers. Oh, well, that wasn't my worry. It was her idea. When Fudge came back in his old shoes and our package was ready, Mr. Berman gave my rather a striped balloon. He offered me one, too. I refused. How could he think a person in fourth grade would want a shoe store balloon? That wasn't so terrible, was it, Peter? My mother said as we left the store. It wasn't? (laughs) I asked. Well, it could have been worse, my mother said. I suppose, I answered. We went to Hamburger Heaven for lunch. We sat in a booth. 
Fudge tossed his balloon around while my mother ordered for him and then for herself. I ordered my own lunch, a hamburger with everything on it and a chocolate milkshake. Fudge was getting a kitty special, meaning a hamburger without the roll, some mashed potatoes and a side order of green beans. Green peas, that is. When our lunch was served, my mother cut Fudge's hamburger into tiny pieces, which he shoved, shoved into his mouth with his fingers. Then she handed him a spoon and told him to eat his mashed potatoes. Instead of eating them, he smeared them on the wall. See, he said, I thought you told me he wouldn't misbehave like that anymore, I said to my mother. Fudgy, that's not a you stop right now, my mother said. Fudge, Fudge saying, eat it or wear it, and he dumped the whole dish of peas over his head. I laughed. I couldn't help it. He looked so silly with peas falling down from his hair. And when I, when I eat and laugh at the same time, I choke. So I choked on my pickle and my mother had to whack me on the back, which gave Fudge, Fudge another chance to spread mashed potatoes on the wall. That's when the waitress asked my mother, did we want anything else? Oh, no, thank you, my mother said. We've had more than enough for now. She wiped off the wall with her napkin and told Fudge he was very, very naughty. Not me, Fudge said, not me. Yes, you, my mother said. Why can't you eat like Peter? See how nice Peter eats? Fudge didn't say anything. He just stuck his fork into his balloon. It popped and he screamed, all gone, one more balloon, more. Shut up, I told him. Can you ever act human? That's enough, Peter, my mother said. She should have slugged him. That would teach that, this, that brother of mine how to behave in hamburger heaven. We took a cab home. Fudge fell asleep on the way. He had his fingers in his mouth and made his slurping noises. <laughs> my brother whispered to me, Our day wasn't that bad, was it, Peter? I didn't answer. I just looked out the taxi window and decided never spend a day with Farley, Drexel, Hatcher again. <laughs> I don't blame him. I, I side with Peter. And that's the end of that reading. So go to your Google Doc and fill out the most amazing summary ever and also your questions, predictions, feelings, and thoughts because that is just what good readers do. Awesome. We'll see you later.